Hi there everyone, Jeremy Brown here on another how-to video. On this video I am going to be going over how to set up a lo standalone local net. Uh, this is where you're going to be using another brand of DCC other than Digitrax. In my case I am going to be using NCE and I needed a local net to be able to run my uh, Tam Valley quad LNS boards. So if you need a local net to be able to run such as Tam Valley boards or something from our circuits or anything else that has to deal with uh, a local net uh, for like turnout control, signaling, detection, any of that kind of stuff, this is how what you're going to need to be able to do uh, in using JMRI uh, for setting up a local net. So the first things you're going to need to do, and I'm going to show you some pictures because mine are already installed in the layout. So first thing you're going to need to get is the local net, or I'm sorry, local buffer USB from RR circuits. Here's a photo of the items that you'll get when you purchase this uh, unit. Uh, right here, this is the main unit uh, that provides the local net. You uh, so you got your local buffer. Then you got your a, a driver CD. There's also some other instructions and uh, other information on there. Then you got a, a short instruction sheet that's included. You got a USB cable, so you got a regular USB port on one end, and you got a square USB port on the other. Uh, a lot of times, this cable is referred to as a printer cable. This other cable here it looks like an old phone <laughs> phone cable for those of us who are old enough to head of to know what a uh, you know regular house or landline phone except this is a six wire uh, with a six pin connector on it I believe it might be referred to as an RJ12 but don't quote me on that so you're gonna get these items um, so that's the first thing you need to get the second thing you need to get well we already seen that let's go to here we go we need the RR circuit SSB gateway. What this device will do is it will actually provide power to your local net and for the rail serve. It is you have to have both of these items to be able to start up a local net. So what we're going to do is first thing you want to do, we'll go ahead and minimize this. First thing you're going to want to do is get this USB cable and go ahead and uh, plug uh, plug the the regular USB cable. Uh, end into your computer. Then what you can do, then you uh, use the square end that plugs into the local buffer USB. Now if you have Windows 7, which I happen to, the drivers will, as soon as you plug that in, the computer is going to recognize it and then all of a sudden it will start looking for the driver and then once it finds it, it will download it. However, if you got, I believe it's Windows 10 or anything older, um, or a Mac OS system, you're going to need to get your drivers off of the CD here that is provided. Um, also, explore it. There, like I said, there's some more detailed instructions on this system uh, within the CD that the little pamphlet that's provided, uh, that's printed, um, doesn't cover. Now, when you plug plug uh, the local buffer USB into the square end. What in your your drivers will like I said your drive either you'll have to install your drivers or your drivers are going to be downloaded. Once those drivers are installed, there is three LEDs on the face of this, two on one side, one on the other. Kind of looks a little bit like this right here. Uh, this is a picture or a video of mine, um, and so you can see there's two LEDs right here. This is supposed to be a, like a I think a red one maybe. Um, but this green light, as soon as the drivers are installed and it's working, the uh, drivers are working, this green LED will light up. Now, we'll go ahead and I'll show you uh, right here. We'll go ahead and search for a device driver. Device manager, I'm sorry, not device driver. Okay, 
is going to show you all the different items here that's on your computer. You're going to look for here for ports, COM and LPT. Go ahead and double click on that and then as soon as the driver is installed it's going to show right here local buffer USB and it's on my COM6. So it's on my COM port 6. That'll come up later. That'll be important um, just to kind of remember. You don't need to write it down. Uh, JMRI will automatically populate that but it just just for reference that's so you know where that's at what you're gonna want to do now I don't not I do not know if this is gonna make a difference or not um, but I went ahead and changed this and if someone knows whether it does or doesn't make a difference please go ahead and uh, ref uh, make that comment uh, in the comment section so other viewers can uh, um, that way they know whether they really do need to do this or not but you want to once you open this up it's got the general information about that port what you've got plugged into it you want to go over here to port settings and right here this bits per second now the local buffer USB runs at 57,600 when I first installed the driver it was actually at 96 so I went ahead and changed to 57.6 whether that makes it like I said I don't know if that makes a difference but I just I changed it and mine works so I just I'm just recommending that you do that so once you do that you just go ahead and hit OK and that's all you need to do for that one okay now once now you've got your drivers installed you've got the, the local buffer USB hooked up you've got a green LED now it's time to, to hook up the SSB gateway which will bring that picture back up this unit right here that's going to provide the power you're going to see that there's two switches right here two little slide switches you're going to want to put both of these onto the on position I know one is to provide power to the rail serve and the other one I think might just be local net power I can't remember offhand but you want to I do know you want both of these on uh, you go ahead and this this also comes with a uh, a power unit that you plug into a wall or otherwise referred to as a wall wart um, plug that in and then plug the black cable uh, the other end right into the uh, SSB gateway now once you've got that there's no LEDs on this to indicate that it's getting power or anything like that just once you do it that's all there is to it now what you want to do is you'll want to get that six wire cable that looks like a phone cable you want to plug it into one there's four spots there's a b c and d doesn't matter which one you plug it in it can go in any of them and then you want to get the other end of that cable and plug it into the uh, phone jack part right here on the local buffer usb uh, we'll go ahead and um Oh, there we go okay now I got it to where you can actually see that it's plugged in as soon as you do that the standalone green LED over here is gonna light up so you got two green LEDs that will be lit so that's good if we're at that point that means you're getting power on your local net which is provided by that the indi is indicated by this green LED and you've also got uh, your drivers installed which is by this LED now once we're at that point we're going to want to go ahead and open up JMRI so I'm going to open up uh, panel pro here might take a couple seconds okay now I'm going to go ahead and hit that because otherwise it's going to automatically start if you're if you haven't downloaded JMRI go ahead and do that uh, go to JMRI.org um, and just follow the instructions with that I'm at this point just going to assume that you're already at that point and you've already installed it. Now, if you have not set a profile yet, um, you can see I've got several different ones in here. Um, and I want to give a big shout out also to Robin with uh, Tam Valley. He helped me out a lot in getting this set up. So, I, uh, between that and also some uh, great help with uh, Model Railroad Hobbyist, the uh, forum there. So, uh, shout out to those people. Okay, you can see I've got five, uh, five different profiles here. Robin has suggested that for my local net programming, which is what I'll be using to program the boards that are on the local net, in this case is the Tam Valley Quad LNS boards, 
is to set up a separate profile for that. So what we're going to do just for this video is I'm going to go, I clicked on new right here to set up a new profile. It's going to want a name. You can name it whatever it is you want. In this case, um, we're going to go ahead and just uh, label it video. It automatically populates a profile location and if you've got profiles that you want to delete you can just go right to this this uh, file right here and delete those it's no big deal alright so now we got our profile here a video we'll go ahead and hit OK alright I'm gonna go ahead and push it over here and get this kinda of centered here for you guys so we're at you can see there's connection one we have no connections yet so what we're going to do we're gonna do a couple things I'm gonna go ahead I'm gonna set up my first connection for my DCC system I do not have it hooked up but I'm gonna go ahead and add it in here now I'm like I mentioned I'm using NCE so whatever one you're using now the key is is I just have it in here as simulator mode that is it that's all I've got um, and again this profile that I'm setting up will eventually end up in your case you can use this for programming your boards um, on local net so I add this here and this will come important later on and I'll show you why so the next so once we got that connection we'll go ahead and hit save it's gonna to want to restart panel pro which is no big deal automatically does it the video if you don't uh, do anything it will has a little countdown here it will automatically start up but you can always just hit OK now once you've done that see here it's gonna show our active profile that's what we named it video whatever you name it that's what will be right there and then now we've got NCE using NCE simulator it's on just yeah just make sure it says simulator whatever brand you use you can just even throw NCE or whatever you're gonna use alright now we're gonna go back here to edit and preferences okay here's our connections again now we're gonna add a new connection now this is to get our local net going so system manufacturer even though we are not hooking up a Digitrack system it's still that's the system uh, that local net is actually proprietary to Digitrax so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna click that system manufacturers Digitrax now our system connection we are actually connecting to the local net via a local net local buffer USB that's the RR circuit unit so we're gonna click on that then it's gonna populate this information down here now remember how earlier I mentioned about the COM6 JMRI automatically populated it right there. Now if you click on the drop down menu you'll see that I've also got another COM port, COM port 1, but I do not want that. You want your serial port that your local buffer USB is on is on, in my case, is COM 6. Now the command station type, okay, we want to change that. We're going to go ahead and scroll down here, I believe it's almost at the bottom, here it is, standalone local net that's exactly what we want the connection prefix we'll just leave it as L that's for local net um, here's an, another local net I'm gonna click on this just to show you this additional connection settings remember I was talking about the broad rate or the bits per second right here 57,600 you cannot change this that is fixed um, so that's why I changed the driver setting on my computer to us to match this right here and these three I don't change a thing on it so we're gonna go ahead and save it again wanting to restart okay we'll hit OK because we're doing video there now it's gonna show here that we've got local net using local net or using local net local buffer USB on COM6 everything's looking great so far this opened up it looks like it's it's talking to it now if we want to double check go up here to local net and we go to monitor net stats now if this window shows up just like this it's going to always populate in that corner but we'll bring it here in the center what it says here for the version breaks and errors really doesn't matter as long as it shows this window that means it's actually up and running now what I'll do is I'm going to close this I'm actually going to pull the local net power 
off by pulling out that six wire cable. Now let's just say for some instance I had some kind of issue where the local net didn't have power or something's not working for the local net and we go to go to the monitor local net stats this is what's going to come up except it's going to be way up over here but we'll just put it back here this means you got a problem something is not working but as soon as I put the power back on the six pin connector back into the local buffer USB bingo it shows right there that's right that we want to see so that in a nutshell is what you need to set up a local nets a standalone local net system and what you need to do to set up your preferences in panel pro there's one last thing that I want to show you with panel pro and this is why we added the NCE I don't it will help for programming later on once you're in here you want to go down to defaults now in this defaults category it's going to show the NCE and it's going to show the local net now NCE we want it to be for the for right now for just programming sake we want it to be on the throttles power control command station but the service programmer and the ops mode programmer we want those to be on local net because these boards that you know whatever boards it is that you're using you gotta you gotta in, initialize them and program them for addresses so that will be done via local net on the service program op mode is actually being able to change different CVs within that uh, whatever, whether whatever system it is that you're using uh, to be able to change the CVs so we'll go ahead and hit save so this is why we added the NCE um, on simulator mode so we could do set up this yeah and again it wants to restart so <laughs> we go ahead and let it so there in a nutshell that is all you gotta do uh, if you've got questions please feel free to place those in the comments I'll try to get those as soon as possible and uh, if you want to feel free to uh, subscribe and hit the alert bell so that way you can get updates on uh, more uh, videos that we'll be doing on how to as the layout progresses also if you want to follow the uh, progress of the Santa Fe High Desert Division layout you can go ahead and search for Santa Fe hyphen High Desert Division on Facebook and uh, send a request to join and I'll approve it and on there we've got a bunch of photos of the uh, progress thus far the track plans and everything else thanks again for watching everyone and happy modeling.